Right, ladies and gentlemen welcome back to shade tree hot rods today we are finally doing the sprocket upgrade for say our 2023 benelli 302 s yep we have our master mechanic in the background as always so, so our plan of attack for today is we got to remove a couple fairings a little piece of plastic bits take this off and then we should have access to our sprocket take off our current chain our old chain Take off the front sprocket. Rear sprocket looks okay. And I'm gonna talk to you guys once I get everything done about why I made this upgrade. So, first things first, let's start disassembling. Gotta take the seed off. Now I try to keep these four screws came out of here, so I'm just going to try to slip them in that little channel. That way I can know that those four screws go with that particular piece. I know. Aren't I a genius? Am I still going to mess up and forget where stuff goes? Without a doubt. All right, we got to take these this part cover off with these bolts. This is going to be 8 millimeter. We need to take uh, this off, which should just be another hit of that four millimeter Allen wrench we have. Try to remember the orientation this thing is sitting at. Okay. I know that this angle is going to have to bypass this bolt hole just a little bit. So that's going to be what I use. Now, if you want to put a marker on it or something, I mean, that's probably better than what I'm doing. There we go. Okay. Well, take it all the way off seems to be the answer. Anyways. Now the spark cover can come off. This thing's a little dirty, you can see. It's time to clean this bad boy out. So we'll go ahead and clean everything up before we put it all back together. All right, we're in neutral, so we're gonna spin our chain around until we can find the master link back here. Now the master link's gonna look a certain way. It's gonna look a lot different than the rest of them. All right, we got a chain brake tool right here. Not 100% on how to use them, but we're gonna learn. So we're gonna tighten we're gonna fit, all right, so basically we're gonna push a pin out, okay? That's kind of what I'm gathering here. We're gonna push a pin out uh, through one of these holes. We're gonna tighten this up, pull this back until, so this one right here operates that little stud that comes through, and this operates the thickness of our chain. So we're just gonna come through, line it up, get everything on there, all nice, nice, and good, good. Just line them up good tighten that up now we're gonna take our wrench and we're just gonna tighten we're not cavemen spongebob we have technology this is a very bad idea probably but what are you gonna do Back this off right here. Pull this down and bada bing. Our chain has been broken. You see our little pin that we took out with our O-ring. So we're gonna keep up with that. Set it off to the side. I'm just gonna pull our chain off. Yes. Like Boom, no more chain. Now, if I started the bike, only the front sprocket would spin because there's nothing connecting to the back. Hurrah. Now, our new chain's gonna be a little more fancy because it's got colors on the links. I know, right? 
Look at that. This one's red. Anyways, we have these little ears right here. We're gonna have to push back. To do that, we got a little flathead and a hammer. Got one more on this side. Just gonna pop it up. Got a 30 millimeter six point socket. Slip on to our mighty impact gun. And rattle it off. Cover your ears, bud. Oh. It's wrong. I gotta put it in gear first. That's what's wrong. <laughs> oh, that worked. Okay. Should be able to take it off now. Yep. Look at there. And we pull the old sprocket off with this little container. And keep up with that. We're going to reuse it even though we probably shouldn't. Boom. Now, here's where the big switch comes, right? The chain isn't really doing too much for us. Let's count the teeth on this thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen teeth. Okay? So originally we had fourteen teeth here. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen teeth. Okay, so we're increasing the number of teeth on the front sprocket by two. All right, now what does that do for us? I'm glad you asked. Let's go to the studio to find out. Okay, so here's the deal it's kind of hard for me to explain just with my words because i'm going to confuse myself and probably y'all so i wrote everything down this is our factory setup our front sprocket had 14 teeth and our rear sprocket had 44 teeth meaning the front sprocket would have to rotate 3.14 times before the rear sprocket would rotate once okay so we essentially had a final drive of 3.14 all right so what that would what that means for us is that in 80 miles per hour indicated on the motorcycle I would actually be traveling 71 miles per hour. This is uh, corroborated by the GPS app on my phone that I use that I have. I've tested it against other very stock vehicles and some that weren't so stock just to basically make sure it was reading right. And it's reading accurate. So that's about 12% off, okay, which is fine. I think motorcycle GPS uh, speedometers can be off by like 15%, 10 to 15%, somewhere in that range. So we're about 12% off, so that's all well and good. But what that would mean for us is my highway RPM at like 70, 75 miles per hour, like actual miles per hour, not just on the bike, was about 8,200 RPM. So not great. That was my big thing with this bike is that it's made for, it's made to be a city bike. It's not made to be on the highways and the interstates all the time without being at a high RPM. But I mean, that's, that is what it is. Now, with our upgrade, we put a 16 tooth front sprocket on it, okay? So what this is gonna mean for us is it's gonna be less torquey, it's gonna be a little more sluggish, accelerating, but it's gonna be better at cruising, which I think is perfectly fine. I mean, I spend more time just in six gear at highway speeds than I do ripping and roaring through turns, okay? And I can always just downshift another gear and still have access to the same kind of torque. But anyways, uh, I went for a test ride, but my, my camera died, even though it said it had 60% on it. I don't know if it just got cold or not, but I, my bike was saying 75 and my GPS said 68 miles per hour. So it's only about 10% off. So we did, we saved that 2%, but it's not exactly what I wanted. I was expecting it to be a whole lot closer, given that our ratio is now 2.75 to one instead of 3.4 to one, meaning the front sprocket is rotating at 2.75 times per one rotation of the rear sprocket uh, but that puts our highway cruising rpm at about 7,000, which to me is better uh you know less stress on the engine that's right at the peak torque for this bike so i mean not horrible so take our new uh, sprocket give it a little shimmy shimmy right there take our retainer put it right there Take our nut, start it back on. Now I'm sure there's a torque spec for this, but as I'm also sure, I don't have it. So, we're just gonna say that it doesn't matter. Tight, that's what we're gonna have. That's our torque spec, tight. Whatever, I'm not too worried about it, if I'm being honest.
I'm sure it'll be okay. Hit that with some pretty good. Let's give it a couple more. That'll be all right. She won't go anywhere. All right, now the fun part. Putting the new chain on. All right, due to the amount of grease that this new chain has on it, I'm gonna wear gloves. Call me what you want. We've left it over. We knew it wouldn't take the entire thing. Now we do know that we need to have 28 to 35 millimeters of slack, right? So we're gonna guesstimate that. So you wanna have something like too tight and it's not bueno. But it looks like this is gonna be the chain that we wanna take off, or this is the link. So now it's gonna take, we have our link right here that we're gonna be putting in. The problem is it's a rivet type connector ring, link. I don't really know what that means. So, you know, like I said before, this is, I'm, you know, when I introduced this bike, it's my first motorcycle, but it's also my first like motorcycle of any sort. So dirt bike, you know, scooter, that kind of stuff. So I'm really having to learn how to do this. So first things first, I guess we'll put these rings here. Well, we got a little diagram that shows us kind of what to do. All right, something didn't look right, so I took a little moment off camera to just kind of assess. And the problem was, uh, I didn't, I had too much slack. That's kind of what I thought. So I actually had to take that link out. I was off by a link, which isn't, not a huge deal. I'm not totally upset by that. Like I said, learning experience, you know, I'm not, I'm not a professional by any stretch of the imagination. So let's just go ahead and pop this link back out. Anyway, so it wasn't tight enough. You know, like I said, the manufacturer spec, which is right here on this little chain cover, says 28 to 35 millimeters of play. We didn't have that. So I had to try to figure out how to get another link out of it, which by pulling it up to here, I could pull tension on the rear sprocket. That seemed to do it pretty well. Take, open up our grease here. Try to put some right there on the back side where the link is gonna have to go. Same thing for this one. You know, just a little bit of mustard never hurt anybody. If they give it to you, you probably need it. We're also gonna put some on the link that we're putting on, on these studs here. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. Pull it up, get it nice and snug. Gotta get it over that link like we had it, just like there. Lay her down. So we got two of these washers or whatever gaskets on the back side. And we're gonna get her going first off. We're gonna use this chain breaker tool as a, cause this is a rivet style master link. Without using a ton of force, we're gonna try to just press this in. like I'm doing something wrong and that's why that's happening which is usually the case yeah okay so yeah that's a problem Preston uh, I hope I didn't mess this up just now I'm only human guys okay I'm gonna make mistakes I kind of forgot about a thing uh, change stretch so you have adjustments so I can Pull these in these are my adjusters right so i can sit here and tighten this up until that link sits properly so like this one needs to come all the way to here which i don't know you know it's going to push it in basically and use a shorter chain so there's another adjustment on the other side so you're going to have to do both of them i'm going to run them all the way in until i can get that link and the master chain on there like it's or the master link like it's supposed to and then we'll be okay. Okay, I think that's my problem. That's what I'm missing. You learn things, okay? You learn things. Some things you may already know and you just need something to jog your memory like this. I knew this thing could be adjusted. I know that you have to be able to adjust tension on your chain. I just didn't think about how. You also have to loosen 
these bolts right here because uh, that holds your wheel on just so you can slide it forward forward and backwards which will tighten it back down of course once everything gets all where it's supposed to be because we would hate for this thing to start moving on me while i'm riding that would be not so fun wow look at that if you do it right it works <laughs> who would have thought that Jeez Louise. All right, so we're not going to use the same one that we just dogged, which, huh, yeah, we can. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference at this point. Anyway, slide these two rings on to the studs that now come out the other side properly. Okay. And you're going to put this link back on the back. This is a rivet style master link. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out the bit that pushes the rivets out. Which is, you know, I'm just going to unscrew this and it's going to have the spring with the rod inside of it. Right there. Oops. Keep up with them. We're just going to be using this thick bit. Slide it over. We're going to go ahead and get it started on the tightening part. Because see, it's flat on this part. So now we're just going to send her home until it makes a rivet. Nope, wrong way. We'll figure it out. So, to the top of here, right until fifty-one point three. It's a little more than they want, so we're going to push these back out. Try to keep this kind of square. This is going to be a back and forth thing for me. All right, now it drains really tight, okay? Which is good, which is good. This means we're doing things. All right, 22 and a half on this side. 22 and a half on this side. That looks like pretty good movement. Again, we're shooting for around about 30. That's pretty good. All right, so now we got those done. We're gonna tighten this back down. And we'll run the set nuts back in place. Let's start it up. The chain moves properly. It's on there pretty good so let's take the seat back off and button everything back up take it outside we're gonna put some lube on the chain we're gonna clean up the sprocket and stuff this sprocket is really dirty I gotta clean out that uh, front sprocket cover spray this area out and then we'll see about taking it for a test ride made a lot of mistakes doing this that you guys saw but I've never done anything like this before and this is a learning opportunity next time I may only make a couple of mistakes instead of all of the mistakes but that's been changing the rear sprocket and a nice little colorful chain upgrade for our 2023 Benelli 302s so keep joining us you know I don't really know what what else we can do to the bike that I'm willing to do to it um, probably not going to get it tuned or anything even with having the bread box taken off I kind of just I like it like it is. It's nice and reliable. Don't really have to worry about it too much. It's just fun. Maybe I'll learn to wheelie. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. But until then, we've been Shade Tree Hot Rods, and we'll see you later.